Today we're going to talk about fire movement and demonstrate how to do it. But in order to do that, we're going to need some guns. Guns? Did somebody say guns? Yes, we did. I love guns. How much do you love guns? More than you. You probably I do. I respect what you're trying to do here, but you're kind of stepping on my toes and you're getting into my territory. You're showing off guns on camera, and I don't know if you're really a gun tuber yet. No, I'm not, but you know what? I'm teachable. Can you teach me how to do this stuff? Careful what you wish for, son. Go left, go left, right on left. Mama, mama, can't you see? Mama, mama, can't you see? What the YouTube did to me? What the YouTube did to me? I used to have a lot of fun. I used to have a lot of fun. Now I gotta review this gun. Now I gotta review this gun. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, 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 oh. The comment section on social media is a very non permissive environment. Even more so if we look at the gun community YouTube comment section. Okay. The high speed cool gun guy looks like a high speed cool gun guy. Damn! I, I want to thank my sponsors for sponsoring. Oh, damn! I want to thank today's sponsor of today's video. Damn! To be a good LARPer, you must look like a good LARPer. Up! My sponsor for this video is. I don't believe you, and Raid Shadow Legends ain't gonna believe you. Damn! Now, when you trudge into those comment sections, you have to be on guard. All right? You have to know all your angles, all your kinesiology you're going into. Okay. I want to thank my sponsors today for sponsoring Holy this video. Holy this, son! Is that all you got? Your movement must be quick. Up. Your actions must be fluid. Down. Sponsoring this video because they're sponsoring this video and they're thanking. I'm thanking them for sponsoring this video. On your feet, son. Okay. Your lore must be believable. Up. Inspection! Arr! Oh, now, not every comment's gonna be nice. Not every comment's gonna be friendly. And you have to understand that, and that's your duty as a gun to. Okay, hey, why do we make videos? Why do we do this? Well, we do this because it's fun. Because we like to LARP. Ultimately, we believe in firearms, okay? If you do not LARP correctly, you will not be loved correctly. Down! To be loved is to be feared. Up! To be feared is to be liked. Damn. Son, this gun is not dirty enough for review. I would not show off this clean gun for review, and I would not show you off for review. Your weekend pass has been revoked. Oh, damn. To be liked is to be subscribed to. Up. Uh, to be subscribed to. Well, that is success on the battlefield of the YouTube art. Damn. New company record. Damn. All right, so I know we said we we're going to demonstrate fire maneuver, but there's something that's important about that that needs to be talked about, and that's suppression. Movement without suppression is unre like not recommended, right? And suppression without movement is a waste of ammunition. But you need suppression in order to close with and destroy the enemy by fire and maneuver or repel the enemy assault by firing close combat. And the reason is, is because the closer you get to them, the closer you can get to actually get your little mitts on them, right? So in order to get to the enemy, you have to keep their heads down and you have to close distance while also keeping their heads down. The only way to do that is to keep rounds coming down range with suppression. And if you're doing that by yourself, it's impossible, right? Because you can't be moving and also providing suppression for yourself, at least not accurate suppression, or at least semi-accurate. So it's better to do that with a buddy, which is why we're gonna talk about fire movement, like leapfrogging, like almost like buddy rushing, right? All right, so today we're joined by Administrative Results himself. Sir, thank you so much for joining us and, and having me out here. It's in, a pleasure to be here, good sir. In God's country. Beautiful country. Arizona by John. Arizona by John. Yeah. Uh, definitely not for the light of heart or the faint of heart. Very desolate environment, but also good for training in. Most environments you're going to go to, if it's something like a war torn situation, are probably not going to be anything but austere anyway. So it's a good place to practice. Um, so today we're going to practice fire movement. We're going to show you what it's supposed to look like. And we're going to give you a good demonstration, not only from an aerial perspective, from, but from a first-person view perspective as well. My desert, my Arizona, my dune. <laughs> yes. 
Hey, dude, why are we uh, using bullets if they have a drone? Why are we not using the drone to drop bombs? That's a good question. What are we doing out here? I don't know. You need to come out here to the sun, <laughs> shoot bullets. <laughs> Just to demonstrate live fire when we had a drone this whole time? Yeah, I think the problem is, is we just don't have any UXO. We have some UXO. Not too far from the border, dude. The border? Uh, I guess there's probably a lot of UXO down there, huh? I have a question for the host. What's up? Uh, now, is there a specific amount of rounds you're supposed to use when laying down the hate? Or is it all up to the end user? I think it's up to the end user, and it depends on how much ammo you were given for that mission. And, you know, obviously, situations dictate that always that's always the answer i know it's like the default answer but you know depending on how many enemy there are how much suppression you need depends on if you you know if you look over and you see your buddy's got a long piece of ground with open terrain and no micro terrain in it maybe you provide a little extra cover for a little longer so you can get across that danger area right i think it's good to open up with like a fat burst in the beginning, get everyone's heads down, get them a little nervous, you know? Oh, hey, what's going on? Yeah. To die? And like, I just, oh man, there's like rounds impacting all around me. I should probably get down real quick. Oh no, he cracked my plates. I gotta, I gotta get some new plates, guys. Someone <laughs> please res me. <laughs> res me. Sorry, buddy, wrong game. Who's no, playing? Who's here? Not gonna lie. I'm gonna sacrifice some skin to the. Yeah, sacrificing some skin to the, to Arrakis. To the yeah, the gods of Arrakis. That's how we kill Harkonnens. Yeah. You just gotta remember that the Harkon the Harkonnens are brutal. Stand by. Contact. All right, so we had an opportunity to practice some fire and movement, show you guys kind of what it looks like. Obviously, there's some minor malfunctions. We can't, I don't want to talk about it right now. Uh, save it for my future video if I go over it. I have to get to the bottom of it. I don't want to, yeah. I don't want to say what I don't know just yet. I have some yeah. creeping suspicions. All that to say, I'm not talking about it. Yeah, got to do some investigative work first. So we'll, that's, that's something that you can check out his channel and monitor to see when it comes up. But in either case, we were able to practice some fire movement, show you guys like what it kind of looks like roughly from either side. Uh, obviously we had set up two different lanes so you could see like kind of the bounding and the movement that goes on. The, the key thing I wanted people to remember is that you can do a couple different ways of communicating. You can either communicate by voice or you can communicate by just listening. So obviously when, when I, get down in the prone or I take a knee or whatever I can say set very loud so he can he can know that I am able to provide covering fire and then he can scream moving and then I can say move to confirm to him that I heard him say that he's moving right so that's one way you can do it the nonverbal way is also effective as well because if he's not able to hear me I'm not able to hear I can just pay attention okay keep firing until I hear him start firing and then when he's firing, that's confirmation for me. 
to get up and start moving. Obviously not doing like a Medal of Honor run, maybe like a few bounds upwards and then get back down the prone or in the knee and then start firing. When he starts hearing me fire, then he can get up and start moving. So it's just a couple different ways of communicating while you're out there downrange or wherever you happen to be at the time. You can do this with two people, you can do this with four people, you can do this with an entire squad, but it's easier to communicate with one or two or three other people uh, when you're doing this kind of stuff. Making sure nobody goes in front of each other, making sure you're not flagging your buddy, making sure they're staying out of your, your left and right lateral limits as you're approaching whatever target or whatever you know enemy you're engaging. The end user is gonna be responsible for safety for this kind of movement. It is. It seems like it's easy, it seems simple, very hard when, when you're actually practicing it. I'm sure that you could agree with that piece, that it's not easy to do. Yeah, so in theory it's very simple. Once you get out here and you start doing it, it becomes a little bit more tricky. Yeah. Uh, it just has to do with all right, pacing of the round, you know, say we're on the flat range where we control all the variables, yeah. right, the semi-flat range. But, it, you know, if you're doing this to force on force capacity, the bad guy gets a vote. Right? Yes, they do. When you get to move or, or your exposure limit. And a lot of this also applies to big boy rules. Yeah. So in the firearms industry, a lot of there's a lot of safety. Like if you go to a flat range, it's very controlled. You know, a lot, the lowest common denominator is applied there because, hey, you know, no one's going down the firing line. Big boy rules are applied out here mm -hmm. where, hey, you are definitely going down range of where someone is shooting. But that's just how reality is. Yeah. Right now, this definitely is like, hey, there's got to be some safety of or, or some uh, higher understanding of firearm safety on the fly. Yeah. A good rule of thumb typically is a death laser of your muzzle, so you just yeah. never point it at your buddies. Uh, otherwise, it's like the, the war, you know, fighting does not get conducted in a flat range manner. There's no like, you can't go past that, you know, so yeah. it's the definitely different in that dynamic. Yeah, well I think an easy way to not accidentally shoot your buddy is to practice the weapon safety rules, which the Marine Corps got their own version. They got the key words, treat, never keep, keep, right? So treat every weapon as if it were loaded. Never point your weapon at anything you do not intend to shoot. Keep your fingers straight and off your trigger until you're ready to fire and keep your weapon on safe until you intend to fire. Those are the four that the Marine Corps uses. Obviously the gun community's probably got various different ones. The Air Force probably has their own version. Army's got their own version. right there. None of those sound right. The first rule is have fun. Second okay. rule is look cool. <laughs> <laughs> you have to do both of those at the same time. If you cannot conduct that, you are off my range. <laughs> but point is, point is, the only way you're going to accidentally shoot your buddy is if you break all four weapon safety rules at the same time. That just means that you're just not paying attention, being careless. And yes, have fun. That's super important because firearms should be fun. You should be able to have a good time. It's a great way to re relieve stress, and it's a great way to have fun with your buddies out in God's country like this. So I appreciate you having me here. Again, it means a lot. So that, yeah. <laughs>